three of the four spots in the semifinal of the NJCAA Division Three National Championship have been decided. The final game of our quarterfinal Thursday. The one seed, the number one ranked Suffolk County Sharks against the eight seed and have not been ranked all season long, Central Lakes Raiders. Central Lakes coming in at 25 and five, Suffolk County at 27 and 0. Should be fun. Central Lakes gonna try to pull an 8-1 upset last two seasons. The one seed has won by an average of 16 points in this 1-8 matchup. Central Lakes, the team closest to Rochester, Minnesota here at the Regional Sports Center in Rochester, 213 miles north up in Brainerd where Central Lakes Community College is located. They're hoping maybe a little bit of Minnesota good luck can come their way as they try to beat the undisputed number one team in the country. Well, the, the biggest advantage, in my opinion, is that they played here before. This is in their conference. Uh, they play Rochester Tech, who's, this is their home gym, and they're in the same conference. So they're familiar with this gym, they're familiar with the environment, and hopefully that carries over if you're a S Central Lakes fan into potentially a quick start, and then you never know what can happen from that point on. Well, Chris Buckley is the key player for them, the sophomore from Coon Rapids, Minnesota. 21.6 points per game, and he just won the Division Three Player of the Week for his performance in the district final, dropping 31 points to get Central Lakes to this tournament. First time they've been to the tournament since 2012. All have come under head coach Jim Russell. It's his 21st season here. They're back. They're ready to roll. They think that they can pull an upset against the one-seed Suffolk County. The impressive thing about Central Lakes coming here you want to be playing your best basketball at the end of the year. You want to see a team on a hot streak. And they've won many games in a row, but their wins in the postseason tournament in the district and regions against two teams that beat them in the regular season, against St. Cloud Tech and Riverland. That shows improvement and that you really are playing your best basketball this time of year as we come into the tournament, seeing them flip the script on teams that had their number earlier in the season. Yeah, and you want to say, hey, Central Lakes, they've got a 15-game winning streak. They're the hot team heading into this one. And then you look <laughs> at the Suffolk County Sharks, and they're on a 27-game win streak under first-year head coach Victor Correa. He gets promoted, takes this team to the tournament, and they expect to be national champions. He said that if they play their game, they will fall in the category of the other two great Suffolk basketball teams back when they won back-to-back -back championships in 2003 and 2004. Victor Correa coming in, 27-0, incredible. And he's got his team as the undisputed number one ranked team all season long, only twice. Two people voted in one poll against Suffolk County as the number one team, and that quickly ended. That poll was all the way back on December 4th. So it's been a long run of dominance for the Suffolk County Sharks as the top team in the Division Three level in the country. It's cliche, but that's why you play the game. Yep. You have to come in here. Central Lakes is going to come in with confidence, knowing that you know what if they get hot, they play their game. They hope that they can you know keep it close to the end and then have a chance down the stretch. And a chance down the stretch is all they're looking for. Suffolk County, they want a chance at their third national title in school history. The final spot in the semifinals will be decided. When we return, this is the National Championships on NJCAA-TV. At the game to buy merchandise? No problem. Visit shop.njcaa.org and order your official NJCAA and National Championship merchandise online. On your first order, use promo code WELCOME10 to receive 10% off. View all of the official 2018 championship merchandise and official NJCAA Adidas gear available. You can also receive free shipping anywhere in the United States on all orders over $75. Visit shop.njcaa.org to order your official gear today. It's time to meet the starting lineups for both the Central Lakes Raiders and the Suffolk County Sharks, led by Victor Correa, 27-0. Let's go ahead and set it down to the public address announcer, and let's meet the starting lineups. Which team will be the final spot in the semifinals for tomorrow? We'll find out. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game, beginning with the guest team on the scoreboard. 
the number eight seed and champions of District 4, Region 13 from Brainerd, Minnesota. Six foot sophomore, number zero, Chris Buckley. A six one sophomore, number two, Malik Kelly. A six three sophomore, number 15, AJ Gray. Six seven freshman, number 21, Ty Johnston. And six four freshman, number 32, Brandon Bergrad. Assistant coaches for the Raiders are Jerome Urbanak and Mark Lindquist. The head coach is Jim Russell. And the opponent for the Raiders tonight, the home team on the scoreboard, the top seeded Suffolk County Community College Sharks. Champions of District 5 and Region 15 from Southern New York. They enter the tournament unbeaten with a record of 27 at home. Starting on with Scott Tank Sophomore, number three, Jay Booker. Starting on with Sophomore, number ten, Stephen Tyne. Six two, Sophomore, number twelve, Tyree Greensley. Six two, Sophomore, number thirteen, Ryan Graziano. And a six five, Sophomore, number twenty three, James Sidner. Starting lineups have been announced. In Central Lakes from Brainerd, they brought a pretty good crowd for this one, only 213 miles north here of the Rochester Regional Sports Center. They would love to pull an 8-1 upset to be the first in a while in this national tournament. And the Suffolk County Sharks led by Stephen Tynes. Talk quickly about Stephen Tynes at Upper Room High School, second in assists in the country, also the 25th leading scorer. Yeah, he's a dynamic player. He has a triple-double with... Points, assists, and steals. So he's also very good defensively. He'll be a handful for anybody. Chris Buckley, he's a handful as well, and he'll be guarded by Jay Bookhart to begin this game. The eight versus one, the final spot in the semifinals. Three taken, three made, and a lead early for the Central Lakes Raiders. Chris Buckley gets the first points of this one. And you'd like to see a quick start when you're the underdog. You want to get that confidence early. And that's a good, about as good a start as you could ask for. You want to get the energy as well. Suffolk County, their first offensive possession. Pass tip, but handled. Tines from the right wing into the right corner. That's a two. Two missed off the right side iron. And it's Tyree Grimsley. 19 points per game. Couldn't get it to go. Working the other way. Malik Kelly. Kelly into the corner to Buckley. Buckley to a wide open shooter on the left wing. Rattles off the back iron. But an offensive rebound. Put back up. And an offensive foul is taking the charge underneath. Stephen Tynes is Malik Kelly trying to get to the bucket. That was a situation where Kelly did a great job getting that offensive rebound, but probably should have given it back out, reset the offense, and tried to get a good shot. I know when you get an offensive rebound, your first reaction is, hey, I probably have a chance to score. He really did it there. It was well defended, recovered on the scramble by Suffolk County. Next time, I'm sure his coach would direct him to do that. Tines into the right corner to Graziano. Back outside. Shot taken. Jay Bookhart from the free throw line. Can't get it to fall. And Central Lakes with a 3 0 advantage. Great pass up and a foul. Committed on Ty Johnson. And he'll get to head to the free throw line. Great pass from Buckley feeding into Johnson. And Central Lakes opportunity to take a two possession lead through the first minute of this one. Tell you what, Central Lakes doesn't look in the least bit intimidated by playing the number one team and an undefeated team. They are going right at them. And just looking that they match up pretty well athletically. Uh, match up to match up. We'll see how the skill contest is, but you know, they look like they belong. 
Ty Johnson, the six foot six freshman from Coon Rapids, Minnesota, had a 31 point game this year, and this is the second of two. The Central Lakes with a four point lead as the eighth seed over the one, Suffolk County. Steven Tynes on the left wing. Steps back to the corner, now working baseline. Pass inside, in and out of the hands of Grimsley, but it hits the knee of Ty Johnson. And it will remain Suffolk County basketball. Suffolk County is really having a difficult time early with this Central Lakes defense. They're keeping them out of the paint for the most part. We'll see if they can draw up something to change that up. Pass goes into Bookhart. Now Graziano, and Graziano has it stolen away. Ty Johnson will cross midcourt. The Central Lakes defense causing real issues. And this will be good for their confidence early against the number one seed, Suffolk County. Buckley has it deep right wing. Buckley, step back, three, no good. Easy rebound for Graziano, and the Sharks work the other way. Need Two. to have more ball movement on that. You can get that shot any time, and Buckley can make it, but not with you don't want it without uh, working some offense and looking for a good shot first. Buckley gets the rebound off the missed three from Tynes. Gets knocked out of his hands, but recovering in the corner is A.J. Ray. Ray feeds Johnson inside. Back out to Ray. Ray goes baseline, has a shot blocked. Recovers the basketball. There's a tie-up. Jump ball, possession belonging to Suffolk County. And the Sharks have yet to get on the scoreboard here. But we saw that from Rock Valley in our last game. They didn't score for the first four minutes of that one, and they ended up winning that game by eight. So that was the, a 7-0 start for their opponents. It's not always how you start, it's how you finish. Grimsley, Euro step, soft off the glass, missed it, and a rebound for Ty Johnson. And stepping out of bounds, trying to save it on the sideline, was A.J. Ray, a sophomore from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And that was a situation where sometimes when you have a good start, as the underdog, you get a little bit too hyped up, and he rushed that, rushed that outlet pass. Really no reason to do so. Wasn't under a ton of pressure. Just needs to calm down a little bit. Graziano, catch and shoot and score. Well, that was actually a pretty good closeout by Ray. He had very little room to get that off. Just knocked it down anyway. Suffolk County on the board, down down by one. Third half, over the left wing, Buckley. Buckley, Jimmy, shake, tried to hand off to Ty Johnson. Stolen away, Graziano. Pass up to Tynes. Tynes stops and nails it. In Suffolk County, 5-0 run, puts it in the lead. The Sharks, led by head coach Victor Correa, Central Lakes, led by head coach Jim Russell. Correa, his first season coaching at this level, Jim Russell is 21st. Tyree Grimsley with the steal, Ty Johnson with a bad pass. Grimsley saves it, and here come the Suffolk County Sharks. Tynes drives in. No look, handoff to Grimsley who scores from the left block. And now we see what Suffolk County is made of, a quick 7-0 run to take a three-point lead. Central Lakes is doing a lot of what we saw Sand Hills do early. They're just going one on five. They're forcing the action. They're not running their offense. We saw them in the second half get a couple ball reversals, move the ball against a good defense to get the defense a little bit out of system. And Central Lakes needs to focus on doing that a little bit more because they're just not getting passing angles going drive and kick without any ball movement first. That's leading to deflections and turnovers. Buckley takes a three, is fouled, and he'll have three shots at the line. Closing out a little too hard is Jay Bookhart, the sophomore. And Chris Buckley will have an opportunity to shoot three, 70-70% free throw shooter this season. He was all Minnesota College Athletic Conference this year, also all region. First free throw good for Buckley. And a lot of these guys have a lot of relatives fairly close compared to the rest of the tournament. As Central Lake's the only team from Minnesota where the tournament's being held. Hometown of Coon Rapids, Minnesota for Chris Buckley, 99 miles away from Rochester. So when you're under the 100 mile mark for a national tournament, you usually get some family members that decide to make their way out. And you can tell that there's definitely a sizable crowd of people here supporting Central Lakes, and their noise is apparent when they're cheering. Perfect trip at the line, three for three, and we're tied at seven. More energy in this gym for this game than there has been for any other so far. Steven Tynes at the midcourt. 
Hands it off inside, Signer. Signer missed an easy layup. It was a good pass from Tynes. And a rebound, bringing up the core Malik Kelly to Burgraff. Now A.J. Ray, and Kelly will reset the offense. Chris Buckley, a toss inside, Ty Johnson. Johnson will find a way on to Burgraff, who air balls a three. Unfortunate there for Burgraff him. jumped backwards on that shot. You either want to land in the same spot or jump a little bit forward. Burgraff a 40% three-point shooter, so it's not like he hasn't taken him and made him this year. He's deflected out of bounds and remains Sharks basketball. 7-7 tie, four and a half minutes into this one. And they'll go ahead and take a timeout. We'll take one with them. Competitive game early. Central Lakes trying to prove that they aren't an underdog and that they're here to play. You're watching the national championships on NJCAA TV. Every student athlete has a team and a team behind that team. There are coaches, trainers, teachers, parents, friends, and each teammate shares the same goal to provide athletes with the support and skills to succeed while staying healthy and safe. At Relation Insurance, we're proud to be a part of your support team. We provide customizable insurance solutions that can help colleges and universities protect athletes, manage risk, and stay ahead of the game. Go team! And welcome back in to the national championships here on NJCAA TV. And fans, it's a good time to remind you, you can follow all the action of the 2019 NJCAA Winter Sport National Championships live on NJCAA TV. It's what you're doing right now. So make sure you visit www.njcaatv.com to view live and archive broadcast of the national tournaments for soccer and volleyball. NJCAA TV is also available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Android TV, and Roku streaming platforms. NJCAA TV, the official digital video network of the NCAA. Chris Buckley with six points for Central Lakes. Ryan Graziano with three for Suffolk County. And we've got a 7-7 tie, Logan. Yep, again, the aggressiveness early of Central Lakes just not backing down from the number one overall seed on either side of the ball is impressive. Graziano catches high, pass inside to Signer, runs into the body of Johnson, rims out. Johnson Russell, with the rebound. They're rebounding really well. There's no second opportunities for this Shark squad. Buckley, nice move, pass into the corner. Floater taken and made. How about Josh Arnold, the freshman from Apley Valley, Minnesota? He played with Trey Jones, the point guard for Duke right now. Oh, wow. When he was in high school. Well, Apley Valley, Minnesota, he is the closest player, 69 miles away to this tournament. Graziano takes a three, misses off the front side of the rim, and bringing down the rebound is Arnold. Arnold averaging just over eight points per game. He averaged 13 points per game off the bench in the month of February. Buckley catches, spins, baseline, fading back, missed it, and a foul underneath, called on Bergman. And it'll be Suffolk County basketball. Nine to seven, Central Lakes in the lead. And early, this looks like a pretty even matchup. But Suffolk County, they're the number one team for a reason. And we'll probably see that as the game goes along, but Central Lakes came to play. Yeah, Central Lakes is just very, very athletic. They're going to be hard to score on. Uh, all game long. We'll see if they can keep up the offensive pace against the Suffolk County defense, but they have the length and athleticism to make things difficult for anyone. Tynes has a shot swatted away. What a block from Jock Hayes, the six foot six freshman out of Atlanta. And a nice behind the back from Arnold. Gets by Tynes into the right corner, A.J. Ray. Ray a head fake, mid range jumper, and a rebound brought down by Grimsley after the jumper misses. Grimsley nearly traveled. Graziano up to Tynes. Tynes gets his man leaning and can't get the bucket to fall. And Suffolk County looks all out of sorts. And a reach-in foul here, unnecessary from Bookhart. And Central Lakes, I would safely say, has Suffolk County on their back foot right now. It's just one of those situations where they're out of sorts. The officials are letting both teams play. It's a physical game. And that has favored Central Lakes so far just because they are bigger and stronger at just about every position. Do you think the officials saw the previous game and thought, ah, we don't want to do that? <laughs> Tough to say. 
Got to keep it on schedule somehow, right? And a travel caught on Central Lakes as he was backing in. Jock Hayes called for the violation. And for those of you that did not know Rock Valley, the victory in the last game, there were both teams in the double bonus with, what, seven minutes left in the second half? There were a lot of fouls in that one. Walking it up for Suffolk County will be Jonathan Agostino, averaging four and a half points per game. Agostino, nice handles, hands off to Graziano, works the three-point line, tries a back cutting Tynes, it's off his hands and out of bounds, and Steven Tynes, He's one of the best players in the country. He was an All-American last season. He struggled early in this one. He's the 25th leading scorer in the country, and he's really been shut down early. Just two points. Well, his specialty is kind of being the floor general and getting other people open. If he doesn't score, it doesn't necessarily matter if he's getting other people good shots, but he hasn't done that either. Ty Johnson working on Signer into the left corner. Three taken and made. How about Gavin Smith from Staples, Minnesota with the three? And Central Lakes has a five-point lead. And we're seven minutes into this first half. And it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like somebody's playing out of their head. It seems like they're as good. This looks like a trend that will likely continue. Grimsley takes a mid-range two and knocks it down. Unless we find out that Suffolk County has just started off extremely poorly and is able to pick it up later. Well, they've trapped Chris Buckley, and it's stolen away. Steven Tynes with a steal. Tynes now running a three-on-one. Hand off to Graziano, who gets the easy lane. Suffolk County with a nice trap there in running. And they've cut the lead back down to one. Feeling the heat check. And it missed off the right side iron. Anytime you make one, you want to shoot that next one just to see if you are feeling hot and then driving, probably shouldn't have not done it at that particular instance. And then driving to the lane and getting fouled is Steven Tons. Yeah, Gavin Smith this year knocked down a three, 37% three-point shooter. Had a 21-point game back on February 20th at Fond du Lac. So it's 12 to 11. Central Lakes in the lead. There will be a timeout on the floor. We'll go ahead and keep it here and remind you that Spalding is proud to be the official basketball of the National Junior College Athletic Association. Spalding's TF1000 Legacy Ball is used exclusively at all NJCAA basketball championships. And the NJ, NJCAA thanks Spalding for their continued support. Spalding, true to the game. 12-11, to 11, Central Lakes in the lead here, Logan. And uh, it doesn't seem like it's fluky. Now, Steven Tynes hasn't got going like we thought he would, but Tyree Grimsley's got five points. Ryan Graziano with five points as well. And honestly, if you look at the you look at the box score, it's nothing really surprising. It all looks normal. It all looks like it's supposed to be there. Central Lakes is just shooting three of nine from the field right now, and they've got a one-point lead. Central Lakes just looks more athletic and bigger and stronger and quicker at just about every position. You can tell that Suffolk County is very skilled. They move the ball. We've seen some shooting but they're going to have to use every bit of that to hold off this Central Lakes team because they, they clearly look like they belong. And the big stat right now, Suffolk County, nine of their 11 points coming off turnovers and in transition. That's something that doesn't seem sustainable unless they keep turning Central Lakes over as the Raiders have turned it over five times in the first eight minutes and two seconds. Coming out of the timeout will be Stephen Tynes at the free throw line. Tynes tonight with just two points. Averaging 20.5 points per game this season. It's Region 15 Player of the Year. Went to Upper Room High School, and, and that was way off from Stephen Tynes. But Tynes not having a great game early. He leads the country in assists with almost 10. 9.9 per game. We can round it up, call it 10. Second one goes... <laughs> for Steven Tynes. He's up to three points tonight. And working the other way with the basketball, Central Lakes checking into the game. First time he's touched the ball is Kelvin Harris, the six foot six freshman out of Milwaukee. Gavin Smith, cross court pass, knocked out of bounds by Grimsley. Central Lakes maintains possession. Gavin Smith's gotta be careful with that one. Suffolk County, a little too good on the defensive end to be tossing up passes like that. Yeah, Suffolk County is clearly well coached. They run their fundamentals well and now they're trying to trap we'll see if it's effective getting out of the trap 
is Malik Kelly. Finds into the corner, Gavin Smith. Working Arnold, traveled in the lane. Easy call. <laughs> and Josh Arnold, the freshman, understands it as well. And Suffolk County regains the basketball. 12-12 tie. Just uh, eight and a half minutes into this one. Sometimes it's better to see if you can get away with the travel because, A, sometimes you'll get away with it, and, B, it's a dead ball turnover instead of throwing a bad pass or doing something else where it leads to a transition opportunity. So you're saying it was a good bad decision. As leaning in, Grimsley missed it. Rebound put back from Signer. Missed it as well. And here comes Josh Arnold. Arnold to his teammate. Kelvin Harris who misses and then the putback opportunity dropped into the bucket by Jock Hayes, the six foot six freshman. Central Lakes up by two. And there's just length everywhere from this Central Lakes team. Tynes driving in, there's the talent. Leaning in and scoring. Ties the game back up. Arnold's a good little point guard. You can see but he's one of those players who can see a step or two ahead of where he's at and move players around into proper position. Harris thought about pulling up from the elbow, gets rid of the basketball, and it's an over and back. And Malik Kelly asking for a tip, but I don't think he's going to get it. And it didn't look like there was any sort of tip there. As Chris Buckley will check back into the game. But good job by Central Lakes. You have your best player come off the floor in Chris Buckley and another starter in Ty Johnson, your second best player with 16 points, and you're still tied in this game 14-14. Got to feel good about the start, that's for sure. Another low-scoring game, but that's probably what you need it to be. Tynes tossing inside. Noah Stevenson turns around and scores. That was a nice-looking move. Where's he been? Stevenson. Strong post move. Stevenson, the freshman center, 16 games played, has not made a start this year, but four points per game, four rebounds in limited minutes, and a 50% shooter. Guy they're trying to bring along. He might just be more effective in this one than he thought. And that might be why he's not in the game much. Poor foul as Ty Johnson was going by him. Yeah, definitely was not able to move his feet to stay in front of Johnson out on the perimeter. Maybe lacks that lateral quickness. Maybe he just had a nice move the first time. You never know. Arnold going in. Floater high and scores. How about Arnold? Agostino had no chance to stay in front of Arnold there. 16-16. Not enough quickness. Up. Hines guarded out high by Kelly. To Graziano, guarded by Buckley. Graziano turns his back, it's stolen away. Tipped by Buckley, Ty Johnson with the official steal. And Buckley will walk it up. Cross court to Malik Kelly. Ty Johnson baseline, Buckley open three, no good. And an easy rebound for Stevenson. Over halfway through this first half. And Central Lake's proven that they can play as the eight seed. Stepping back, shot blocks. Malik Kelly got his hand on the Tynes jumper. Arnold, hand off, spinning Kelvin Harris, and he's fouled. And Harris will get to head to the free throw line to shoot two. And we mentioned, you mentioned how Central Lakes has gotten better as the year goes, goes along. And you see that in a lot of the statistics for the month, month of February. You play a couple games of the beginning of March and they have the break until this tournament. In the month of February, Josh Arnold, he upped his game to 12.9 points per game. Kelvin Harris, who makes the first of two, he also upped his game in the month of February. Normally averaged seven points per game, and in the month of February averaged 10 points per game and shot 58% from the field. So these role players have started to step up for Central Lakes, and that's a big reason for their turnaround. Yeah, this is a team, both of these teams have quite a bit of depth, several players who can play. As it's knocked out of bounds, and it will be Central Lakes basketball, Ty Grimsley had his hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. Love to see that replay. I think that might have been last touch by Central Lakes, but nobody really arguing it. Ty Johnson catches at the elbow, goes in, up and under, missed it, gets his own rebound, goes back up, can't get it again, gets his own rebound again, goes in the lane once more, kisses off the glass, missed it a fourth time, and finally it's going to be, and Suffolk County throws it away. Ty Johnson with the steal. He won't try it this time, finds Arnold open in the corner, and he makes the net right again with the three, and it's a four-point lead for the Raiders. There's a lot of good looks for Central Lakes. They missed a lot of them, and then a kind of cheapy foul for Arnold, but that was a nice transition opportunity. It was set up because Tynes tried to leak out 
So then when they stole that ball on the tip pass, it was four on five the other way and left one player wide open, and it was Arnold. They took advantage of it. Great find from Johnson and, and great way to calm down and not try to get that bucket that he missed four times previous. Walking it up here for Suffolk County with Jonathan Agostino, sophomore guard. Agostino, a bounce pass to a cutting Tynes. Tynes hands off to Stevenson. Uses the body but can't make the shot. Good defense from Ty Johnson underneath. Arnold, bounce pass. Short corner, Harris. Jumper way short. Wasn't really sure about it. Stevenson with a rebound. And that was a situation where he probably didn't want to shoot a jumper. He was so wide open that he felt like he had to. Tynes fouled as he tried to deliver a pass into the corner. It'll be on the floor, an inbound upcoming for the Sharks. And if you'd ask Suffolk County, hey, you think you'll be down four points to the eight seed 12 minutes into this one? I don't think they'd say that they expected this. Let's, let's phrase that differently. I think if you had a, somebody who knew nothing about either of these two teams and said which one is the number one seed, you'd guess Central Lakes. That's a great way to put it. They just look, they're overwhelming them athletically at just about every position. They just look better so far. And fans, you want to keep up with the latest news and updates regarding NJCAA basketball. That's how you'd know who is the one seed without us telling you. Um, you want to make sure you visit the official website of the National Junior College Athletic Association at www.njcaa.org. And the NJCAA does such a great job of making sure that all the data is collected in one place. You can learn anything about all three divisions of this awesome organization, these awesome national championships. And and that's how you and I did a lot of this prep work and research, and it's how you and I found out a lot about these teams. And the National Junior College Athletic Association continues to do a fantastic job every year. You know what they also do? They make sure that the broadcasters have free ham sandwiches in the hospitality room. It's extremely Maybe important. most important. It was more than ham. There was also <laughs> turkey, roast beef, Kaiser roll, croissant. You had many options. I'm not a coleslaw guy, so I wish that side would have been replaced, but no complaints. You can't have it really. all. No complaints whatsoever, and no complaints for Central Lakes and their fans. They made the trip 213 miles from Brainerd, Minnesota, and they've got a four-point lead on the one seed, and it would be the shock of the tournament if Suffolk County went down in this game. And it's because of their ranking. They've received all the first-place votes this year except 4-2. Inbound to Gassiano, three taken and made. How about a got Agostino, rather, the sophomore from the corner, cuts it down to one. He lacks in size. He makes up for in range. Big bucket right there. Burgraff to Buckley. Buckley guarded by Tynes. A.J. Ray from the elbow. Over Stevenson. Bank is not open. It's past 5 o'clock. Stephen Tynes will cross the timeline. Tynes handoff to Agostino. Agostino drives in. Tries to find the tall Stevenson. Ball does not hit. Yes, it does hit out of bounds. And it will be Sharks basketball. Saying it last touched Arnold on the way out was the baseline official. Could be a tough call, but official was right there. He must have had a toe on that baseline. Tynes inbounding. Out high to Agostino. Back to Tynes in the corner. Tynes fouled by A.J. Ray as he tried to work around him. That's a foul that just doesn't do any good. There's no reward to taking that risk. Right in front of the official, 10 feet beyond the arc a good ball handler, you're not going to get that steal. Why would you reach in at that point? Inbound to the corner to Tynes. Arnold with a tough task of guarding the 25th best scorer in the country. Tynes goes up and scores. And Tynes gives Suffolk County a lead. Haven't had many in this game. A.J. Ray on the left wing. Now Buckley from the elbow. And the lead's right back to Central Lakes. I didn't see who said it. I think it might have been Burgraff. There was a really nice screen to free up Buckley for that jumper. And he curled off it to perfection. Buckley with eight points tonight. Steven Tynes with seven. Tynes driving in the lane. Fades back and scores. Buckley versus Tynes. They keep going back and forth. And the lead belongs to the Sharks. Ty Johnson working on Stevenson. Burgraff, right wing. Now Johnson inside. A.J. Ray, right corner three. No good. Rebound, tipped out, and a foul called on Agostino as he took the legs down underneath from Burgraff. 
And yeah, Agostino may have had position, but he's 5'8". Burgraff is 6'4". At some point, it's just math there. He's not able to get the rebound. He's still trying to plead his case to the official, but he undercut him when he jumped, and that's uh, going to be a foul every time. It's not an intentional foul, but it's a dangerous play. It puts Central Lakes in the bonus, so they'll be shooting a one and one First from Burgraff is good, and the ball don't lie. Burgraff, a 79% free throw shooter, is a big guy. Not a real common stat, but a valuable stat when you can have a guy inside. Yeah, he's a, he's a 40, 40, 75 guy, 42% from the field, 40% from three, and 79% from the free throw line. Might have been 39.5% from three. We round that up. That's a 40% three-point shooter. 20, Good enough. 24-23, Central Lakes. They're in the lead. Arnold guarding Tynes. Tynes. Into the corner. Agostino, great pump fake. Now shoots the three. He's fouled. And he'll get three shots at the line. A.J. Ray hacked Agostino. It's a good pump fake by Agostino. And Agostino got knocked down like a like he got hit by a linebacker right there. <laughs> and I think it was a, a real reaction. I don't think he tried to sell No, us. it was definitely a re reaction. He got hit in the air. First of three missed by Agostino. Central Lakes leading by one. 14 minutes into this one. Second of three. And it's good for Agostino. 75% aligned for the sophomore Jonathan Agostino. Suffolk County Sharks team. National champions in 2003 and 2004. Misses two or three. Yeah, unfortunate for Agostino as it fell off the right side iron. Buckley deep right wing, leaning into his defender. Michael Pictagio on the defense. Buckley inside, pump fake. Gets Signer to go around him and scores easy. And Central Lakes back up by two. It's just a mismatch. Picatagio can't stay in front of Buckley. He doesn't have that lateral quickness. Michael Pictagio, the freshman guard. Steven Tynes from the right wing. Driving in, finds an open man in the corner. Now inside to Stevenson. One hand in the air and scores, Noah Stevenson. He's good on the post. That's his second. Just nice hook shot with his size. Nobody's really going to be able to guard that if he can get position. Gavin Smith, 1-3 tonight with the basketball. Find Burgraff who throws it into the corner where nobody's standing. And a turnover for Central Lakes. Arnold made a quick fake cut. And they thought that that's where he was going to be. Quickly cut the other way right as the ball was released. Tough break. Turnover number eight for the Central Lakes Raiders. That's really what's keeping Suffolk County in this game is their ability to force turnovers. Michael Bictagio on the left wing. Hand off to Tynes. Tynes double teamed. Runs over Buckley. No call. Tynes in the lane and it falls out. Stevenson with an offensive board. High off the glass. Can't get it to fall. 26-26. Four and a half left. Opening half in the final quarterfinal matchup of this Division Three National Championship Tournament in Rochester, Minnesota. Buckley behind the back twice. Step back three. Off the short, off the front of the rim. That's Tines a with the rebound. Up to Stevenson. Stevenson, shot blocked by Burgraff. Great block. Lakes with numbers. Buckley to Smith. Open three. Good three. Central Lakes up by three. That was great defense by Burgraff. That was a three on one. It wasn't executed very well by Suffolk County, but for Burgraff to stop a three on one and turn it into a three pointer, that's essentially a five point swing. Gavin Smith with two threes today. Agostino works around him, high off the glass, missed off the front side iron, and a great save out of bounds by Arnold. Ripped it out of the hands of Stevenson. Up to Smith. Smith from the right block, missed an easy layup. Arnold saves it again before it goes out of bounds, but can't find his teammate. On the sideline, Burgraff. And with 3.30 left, it's 29-26. Central Lakes in the lead. Timeout on the floor. This is why we play the games. Gavin Smith executes the three in Central Lakes. 
leads the number one seed Sharks by three. This is the national championships on NJCAA TV. Central Lakes 29, Suffolk County 26. And this is the A1 matchup, and if you're just tuning us, tuning in, Suffolk County is the one seed. Central Lakes is the eight seed. So you would call this an upset so far through the first half. Logan. And usually when, and we've said this a couple times, but usually when you see an eight one type of upset, someone's just playing out of their mind, making every shot, just catching fire. Central Lakes really hasn't done that. They've been sloppy. They have eight turnovers. They're shooting 36%. Compared to Suffolk County's 39%. They're getting outshot from both the field and from three, and Central Lakes has turned the basketball over more. They are just more athletic at about every position, and they are giving issues and able to get to the hoop and just get about every loose ball that we've seen. Stevenson to a back-cutting Signer. Signer is fouled on his way up. That Signer's was, frustrated. He wanted that one. That was a good pass, and Signer had a good look at, for a chance at a three-point play. Not a real hard foul. I'm sure he would tell you that you got to finish that one. Signer has yet to score today. Sophomore forward has started every game he's played this year. He makes the first of two. He's on the scoreboard. Nine points per game. Well, just under ten points a game for Signer. Just over ten rebounds per game. What well, Suffolk County does do very good, they're disciplined, they're clearly well coached. They don't make very many mistakes. They're going to make Central Lakes beat them. So they won't far, beat themselves. So far, Central Lakes has beat them. They're up 29-27. Three minutes left in the opening half. Arnold off the dribble, works on Grimsley, and gets a soft touch off the front of the rim. That was pretty well defended. Really nice shot by Arnold. Nine points tonight for the freshman Arnold coming off the bench. Tyree Grimsley, left wing, four points for him. Bounce pass to Graziano in the lane. Graziano leading and scoring over Gavin Smith. Graziano got matched up on a switch with Smith, and he just has the size advantage there, was able to put that up and in pretty, pretty easy. At the point, Jock Hayes. Hayes inside on Stevenson, foul. Unable to get it to go. It's so another situation, though, where Hayes, when they isolate on the perimeter, Stevenson just can't stay in front of him. He doesn't have the quickness or explosiveness. That help side is going to have to be there every time, and then that collapses the defense and allows open shooters. It's just a tough matchup for this Suffolk County team. Jock Hayes at the line now, 69% free throw shooter this year. Hometown Atlanta, Georgia. Went to the same high school as his teammate Michael Kelly. Also his teammates Davis Gilbert and Shamar Hill. Hill and Gilbert have not entered the game, but all from the same high school in the Atlanta era, area. Interesting uh, decision to trek all the way up to Brainerd, Minnesota to play some college basketball, but good recruiting job from Jim Russell. Sometimes you go where the opportunity is. He's with three dribbles. And it's an empty trip for him. Hines brings down the rebound, pushing it quickly for Suffolk County. Steven Tynes a no-look pass. Bounce pass into Graziano, and it's blocked off the backboard by Kelvin Harris. But an offensive rebound, Tynes gets it to fall. That was a really nice backdoor cut by Graziano. You just have to finish that, but just a warrior mentality by Tynes to get in there among the trees. Buckley pulls a three, missed it. And a rebound, Graziano, and a great defensive play by Harris to even poke it out of Graziano's hands. But it will be Sharks basketball working the other direction. 31-31. Minute 53 left in the opening half. Steven Tynes, 11 points tonight. 
leading all scorers. Gets it to Grimsley, into Graziano. Baseline works it to Pictangia. Bounce pass to Signer. Now Tynes. Graziano, three, no good. Rebound, brought down, Ty Grimsley. Grimsley to Tynes. Tynes will reset the offense, a fresh shot clock. I know he missed the shot. That was a really good offensive possession. A couple ball reversals, an open shot for a good shooter. Tynes goes by Johnson. Johnson blocks it out of bounds. Ty Johnson says, you may be quicker, but I am longer, and I shall send your shot out of bounds. It was more like a volleyball spike than a block. Johnson Does averaging. Spalding make volleyballs too? I believe they do. Johnson, 1.9 blocks per game. He's, he's prone to do that, an all-region player. Graziano catches in the corner, under 15 on the shot clock. How about Tynes right wing to Graziano, corner three. Airballed it, and then a foul committed by Kelvin Harris after the offensive rebound on the airball by Tyree Grimsley. Sometimes airballs are the most difficult shots to rebound. You're in a spot, you're waiting for the ball to come off at a predictable angle, and then it just comes out of nowhere, and it's easy to miss, or it's easy to mishandle. And Tyree Grimsley took advantage of it. Got an did. offensive rebound and got to the line. Grimsley is the best shooter from the field as he misses the first of two in the country. 72% from the field, it's incredible. But he's only 59% from the line, so he is better when there's a defender harassing him, which is, which is really interesting. He's also an athletic guy who can get to the rim and probably shoots a lot of point blank shots. Grimsley, when he was asked why he thinks this Suffolk County team can win the national tournament, he says, we got more heart. Now, right now, Central Lake showing a lot of heart. They do also the execute season. extremely well. And a bad pass from Buckley out in front of the cutting Jock Hayes. And it's Suffolk County basketball, another turnover for Central Lakes. Central Lakes now nine turnovers in this game. And really, if they eliminate those turnovers, they could have a five to seven point lead on Suffolk County. Graziano catches off the pass from Tynes. Missed it, right side iron. Pictagio with an offensive rebound. Bounce pass to Signer. Works inside the lane and scores over top of Bergrath. Some leaping ability from Signer right there to climb the ladder. He shot that almost down off the glass. Suffolk County up by two. Shot clock is off. Here at the end of the first half. Josh Arnold into the left corner. Thought about the three and a turnover as Jock Hayes. And a foul by Ty Johnson on... Pictagia. And it should be a one and one. That should be double bonus, actually. Two shots upcoming. Pictagia make his way to the line to shoot two. 15 seconds left in the half. And that was a real wasted opportunity for Central Lakes. Had an opportunity to tie or just be down two. And a turnover in the corner by Jock Hayes. Gives Suffolk County an opportunity to have a two possession lead going into half. Central Lakes hasn't executed very well offensively. And they've been undisciplined on the defensive side. They've committed silly fouls. I don't think any of their fouls that they've been called for have been even remotely questionable. That last one was a reach in again with a very high risk, very little reward. And it put Picatagio on the line with a chance to kind of give Suffolk County, despite being outplayed much of this first half, the advantage. Execution It's what they say is important in basketball. Right now, 10 turnovers for Central Lakes, 5 for Suffolk County. Suffolk County, 14 points, make it 15 points off of those turnovers. Four-point lead, under 15 to play. Shot clock is off. Buckley will walk it up the court. And Central Lakes make it a one-possession game. They put Smith in the game to provide shooting. Buckley with the three, missed it. And a rebound by Grimsley. And Suffolk County, somehow, someway, Despite failing the eye test, will walk into halftime with a four-point lead. The one seed, they're being tested. They're being pushed. And Logan and I will break down that exhilarating first half when we return. You're watching the National Championships on NJCAA-TV.
Halftime here in Rochester, Minnesota. The final of four quarterfinal matchups on this not snowy but snow covered ground Thursday in Rochester, Minnesota. It's I'm actually all melting finally. <laughs> very slowly, melting very slowly. Um, I'm Lucas Morton alongside me is Logan Anderson. We are here in Rochester, Minnesota. Suffolk County, the one seed, a four point lead in halftime over Central Lakes, but Central Lakes looked pretty good in that first half. And before we break down, Half number one, fans, you can follow all the action of the 2019 NJCAA Winter Sport National Championships live on NJCAA TV. So go to www.njcaatv.com to view live and archive broadcasts of the national tournaments for soccer and volleyball. NJCAA TV is also available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Android TV, and Roku streaming platforms, NJCAA TV the official digital video network of the NJCAA Suffolk County 35, Central Lakes 31. And safe to say, we did not expect what we saw in that first half. Logan. No, we didn't. But you know what? Suffolk County was able to withstand the storm. And it doesn't feel like they played real well, but they're up by four. And that's what's important going into half is you don't always have to play your best. But if you get the win at this time of year, Style points don't matter. Well, you just so have to move on to the next round and get that next matchup. And so far, they're in front. And there you see the stats in front of you on the screen. Central Lake shooting just 35.7% from the field today. Suffolk County shooting a little bit better at 38.9 from three. Central Lakes has doubled up Suffolk County's total, but have taken five more three. Central Lakes couple more rebounds but the turnover number I think is the one that really describes where this half went awry for Central Lakes off those 10 turnovers for Central Lakes Suffolk County able to get 15 points off of those turnovers they were efficient every time that Central Lakes turned it over it felt like Suffolk County and the Sharks were taking advantage yeah they forced turnovers and they actually got more offensive rebounds than Central Lakes did you would think with a long athletic team like Central Lakes, they should get some offensive boards. They really didn't. If you look at all the extra possessions that Suffolk County got, combined with turnovers and offensive rebounds, they're plus seven. And they were able to take advantage of most of those and put points on the board. And those extra possessions are absolutely crucial in this game. They're, they're really the difference. And we look at individuals. Chris Buckley, 10 points in that first half. The other double-digit scorer in this game was Stephen Tynes of Suffolk County. We did expect that. Tynes with 11, Buckley with 10. The two guards controlling the offenses for both these teams. They've been doing battle all day long, and, and they both look really good. Yeah, Tynes has absolutely fit the billing of what we expected to see. of A point guard who can score but is really good at getting everybody else involved. He has made some big shots and some big plays. Uh, at crucial times during that first half when it seemed like Central Lakes was really going to take control. And his kind of steadiness and heady play is really what's what turned the tide. How about Josh Arnold? Off the bench, nine points for Central Lakes. And how about Gavin Smith? Six points off the bench. And actually, let me do this math real quick. 15, 17, 18 of the 31. Over half the points for Central Lakes coming off the bench with Josh Arnold, Gav Gavin Smith. Harrison Hayes. I mean, it, uh, they got a lot of scoring from the bench. Gavin Smith, Josh Arnold stepping up in a huge game as freshman. Josh Arnold has looked very much like Tynes in a lot of ways. He doesn't quite have the floor vision that Tynes has, but he has the quickness. He has that ability to get to a spot in control and then break down the defense from there. He's not as good as Tynes. Tynes deserves all the recognition he has, but the style of play is similar. This game, it's better than what anybody would have thought. These last two one versus eight matchups, the last two seasons, average margin of victory for the one seed, 16 and a half. Right now, Suffolk County, a four-point lead. And honestly, you and I think that Central Lakes played better in that first half. I think this one will be good down the stretch. I think Central Lakes has every opportunity to win this game, and I think they have every opportunity to be an eight seed in the semifinals with the chance to play the Rock Valley Gold Eagles. Only time will tell. It's certainly, if they stop hurting themselves, if they stop turning the ball over and giving up offensive rebounds, I would expect them to come out on top, just from what I've seen in that first half. 
Only time will tell as the Rock Valley Golden Eagles, you see him hanging all around the gym. Coach Tim Sanquist in the corner doing a little bit of scouting for the matchup tomorrow. Who will it be? Will it be the Raiders of Central Lakes from Raynard, Minnesota? Or will it be Suffolk County from Selden, New York? Come back for the second half and find out. Will there be an upset? This is the National Championships on NJCAA TV. At the game to buy merchandise? No problem. Visit shop.njcaa.org and order your official NJCAA and National Championship merchandise online. On your first order, use promo code WELCOME10 to receive 10% off. View all of the official 2018 championship merchandise and official NJCAA Adidas gear available. You can also receive free shipping anywhere in the United States on all orders over $75. Visit shop.njcaa.org to order your official gear today. Are you tired of watching your favorite NJCAA broadcasts on your small mobile device? You can now watch them on your TV with new apps for Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the NJCAA and Blue Frame Technology. the game to buy merchandise? No problem. Visit shop.njcaa.org and order your official NJCAA and National Championship merchandise online. On your first order, use promo code WELCOME10 to receive 10% off. View all of the official 2018 Championship merchandise and official NJCAA Adidas gear available. You can also receive free shipping anywhere in the United States on all orders over $75. Visit shop.njcaa.org to order your official gear today. Are you tired of watching your favorite NJCAA broadcasts on your small mobile device? You can now watch them on your TV with new apps for Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the NJCAA and Blue Frame Technology. the game to buy merchandise? No problem. Visit shop.njcaa.org and order your official NJCAA and National Championship merchandise online. On your first order, use promo code WELCOME10 to receive 10% off. View all of the official 2018 Championship merchandise and official NJCAA Adidas gear available. You can also receive free shipping anywhere in the United States on all orders over $75. Visit shop.njcaa.org to order your official gear today. Are you tired of watching your favorite NJCAA broadcasts on your small mobile device? You can now watch them on your TV with new apps for Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the NJCAA and Blue Frame Technology. We've got 20 minutes to decide the final spot of four in the National Junior Collegiate Athletic Association's Division III Men's Basketball National Tournament. We're about ready to go. Half number two, Lucas Moore here, Logan Anderson there. Kaiser DeCam running all the camera switchy stuff that I don't know how to do. 35-31, Suffolk County in the lead. Central Lakes will start with a basketball. Malik Kelly bringing it across midcourt. Kelly to Buckley. Buckley had 10 in the first half. That's a two. Missed it. Ty Johnson can't get the rebound, but knocks it to Buckley. Buckley airballs a floater. And a rebound for Graziano. 
It's a good contest by Signer. Buckley had to float that higher than he wanted to because Signer was there in the way. Tines guarded out high by Buckley, by Kelly, rather. Now Graziano. Bounce pass to Signer. Caught by Bookhart. Bookhart to Tines. Three made. Steven Tines in the biggest lead of the game for either team belongs to Suffolk County. 38-31. Seven-point advantage. They trap Kelly in the corner, but it's off the foot of Ty Grimsley. It'll be Central Lakes basketball. They give that to Suffolk County. They gave it to Suffolk County. It's off the foot of Central Lakes. And the Sharks have possession back at a seven-point lead, and all of a sudden they're 1-3 away from double digit. Suffolk County has come out with a lot of intensity here at halftime. We'll see if Central Lakes can come back and match it. Victor Correa, Region 15 Coach of the Year, promoted from the assistant role after five years in it for Suffolk County. With 27-0 in his first year, Birdgraf knocks it out of bounds as they try the entry pass into Grimsley. Talking about Coach Correa, this is clearly a well-coached team. Teams that don't beat themselves, they make the right decisions, and they get the ball where it's supposed to be. Korea always been a Suffolk guy. Was a head coach at Suffolk Lutheran High School. Graziano driving baseline. Looks for a pass. Finds it stolen away. Is unable to find anybody. It was Bookhart. Up the other direction and laying it in. Malik Kelly. And it lead for Suffolk County down to five. Central Lakes. They have that belief though. They know they can play with this team. So if Suffolk County builds up a seven point lead. They didn't get discouraged. No I don't expect this to be a blowout in either direction. Neither team going to be intimidated. Graziano took one too many steps. And he's called for the traveler. 38-33, Suffolk County in the lead. Steven Tynes. Pass inside, goes to Ty Johnson. Backing down Signer to an open A.J. Ray. 0 for 4 in the first half, make it 0 for 5, but Grimsley can't handle the rebound. And it's Central Lakes basketball. 38-33 with 18-11 left in the second half, final half, of what's been a marathon day for all of us here. But it could be our best finish yet. Ty Johnson to Kelly. Kelly off the glass and scores. And the lead back down to 3. Kelly just too strong for Picataggio on the block. I think they need to do more of that. Get those isolations and post-up plays for their guards. Because there's almost always a guard on the floor for Central Lakes who's going to have a physical advantage over whoever's defending him. Setback three for Tynes, guarded by Kelly. Missed it. Grimsley, tough rebound. And he throws it off a Central Lakes player. And it'll be Suffolk County basketball. Great little play from Tyree Grimsley falling out of bounds. Grimsley tonight with just four points, averages 19 on the year. Pitazio, the man inbounding. Finds Signer, hands off to Tynes. Tynes guarded by Malik Kelly. Graziano, step back, elbow jumper, banked it in. I don't think he called it. It's past five. <laughs> they opened up just for him. He needed to deposit for two, and they gave it to him. Suffolk County back up by five. Buckley to A.J. Ray. To Ty Johnson, 0 for 4 in the first half. Make it 1 for 5, three counts. And Suffolk County, just a two-point lead. Back within two. It would be interesting to see if Central Lakes put some full-court pressure on Suffolk County. I think a faster-paced game would benefit the Raiders. Tyree Grimsley works to the rim and scores. Six points down for him tonight. Ty Johnson just hit the three last possession. Takes two long steps in. Softly off the glass. Up and under. And still a two-point lead for Suffolk County. Central Lakes had that run quickly. So, survived that run that the Sharks had when they came out of the locker room. You can just tell in the way they carry themselves. Central Lakes at this point thinks they're the better team. Whether they are or not, still to be decided. Victazio to Signer to Tynes. Tynes off the screen, deep three. Tried to fake a foul. No call there. Buckley up to Johnson. Two steps, shot blocked by Signer. 
Really good hustle by Signer to get back there. Itagio guarded by Buckley. He's in trouble near midcourt. Buckley's got his number here. It's going to be very close to a five-second call, but a nice pass. And a whistle on the floor. And it's a foul on Suffolk County. And this is a replay of that beautiful lay-in by Ty Johnson that was blocked away by Signer. 42-40 Suffolk County in the lead. Timeout on the floor. We'll go ahead and keep it here and remind you that Spalding is proud to be the official basketball of the National Junior College Athletic Association. Spalding's TF1000 Legacy Ball, boy, that's a cool name, is used exclusively at all NJCAA basketball championships and the NJCAA. Thanks, Spalding, for their continued support. Spalding, true to the game. If I shoot that basketball, will it go in more often? If I'm not very good? No. Oh, okay. It's not a magic ball. I'd, I'd pay a lot of money for it if it, if it did. And yeah, for but, no one else. But then your opponents, then your <laughs> and, opponents and would make no more one else. too. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm all about my own stats. Not like these players. <laughs> it's been a fun game so far. Yes, two-point game. Suffolk County with the advantage. Early here in this second half of action. Final game of the day. First game of the day, Middlesex County was unable to pull the upset in the 6-3 matchup. Holding on was Richland in overtime, 91-87. That was the game of the day so far. Without a doubt. That overtime game, fantastic. Latrell West, 35 points in a losing effort. And we had Rock Valley in the game previous with a tight win against Bunker Hill. Taking care of business was Herkimer. Two over the seven. They've been the most impressive team that we've seen so far. Obviously, anything can happen. But they look really good in their win. And a turnover here for Suffolk County off the inbound. Malik Kelly driving inside the lane, contested and foul. Three tall, long bodies in his way. But James Signer reached a little too far into the body of Buckley. Or in the body of Kelly, and he'll head to the free throw line. Kelly was a little out of control. If Signer would have slid in there and planted his feet, probably could have taken a charge. Instead, went for the block and ended up committing the foul. Second of the game. And a timeout on the floor. We'll go ahead and step aside this time. Suffolk County, 42. Central Lakes, 40. We've got a tight one. 15 minutes left in this one. This is NJCA TV. Every student athlete has a team, and a team behind that team. There are coaches, trainers, teachers, parents, friends, and each teammate shares the same goal to provide athletes with the support and skills to succeed while staying healthy and safe. At Relation Insurance, we're proud to be a part of your support team. We provide customizable insurance solutions that can help colleges and universities protect athletes, manage risk, and stay ahead of the game. Go team! 42-40, Suffolk County Sharks with the advantage, but not comfortable because of that team right there. Central Lakes, they came to play. And right now, head coach Jim Russell giving him some motivation, giving him some advice in the huddle. Probably telling him, hey guys, you're right in this. Play a clean game, and you can walk away victorious with an 8-1 upset and an opportunity to play in the semifinals. If you went player by player individually, you would probably say at least four of the five are as good or better than Suffolk County for Central Lakes. But Suffolk County plays so well together. You can see that they have chemistry, they move the ball, and they just don't make very many mistakes. I would make a lot of comparisons to some teams I've covered in my time, but not many of our viewers would understand those references. But there are many teams in the history of basketball that have overperformed their talent. Greg Popovich, I think, is a great example of a coach that gets the most out of lacking talent. I don't want to say there's lacking talent. I think that's a poor way That is a poor use of it. words. Gets we've the done most four, out of what's on the We've done four floor. games. You can't say everything right live. That's true. 42-42. Steven Tynes near midcourt. Bounce pass to the left wing. Tynes is as good of a talent as we've seen out here. He's incredible. Well, without a doubt. And Jay Bookhart 
with the ball right now has had a 41-point game this year. He can go off at any time. Tyree Grimsley, the best field goal shooter in the country, misses a layup going in. Gets tied up with the basketball. Malik Kelly with some emotion trying to get the basketball from Grimsley. It is a jump ball. And the possession arrow is in favor of, I believe, Central Lakes, but it looks like Suffolk County will have themselves the basketball. Yes, they will. They must have changed it quickly. Doing a too good of a job at that table. They'll toss it up high. Steven Tynes with the basketball. Tynes tonight, 14 points. Graziano, turnover. Tried to find Grimsley inside. And Ty Johnson with great defense there. A.J. Ray on the left wing. Chest pass to Buckley. Buckley drives in. Nice pass to Kelly. Kelly, right block, no good. Gets his own rebound and scores. And Central Lakes back in the lead as the eight seed. Kelly is 6'1", but he is really strong. And he, anytime he has gotten the ball on the block, he has just overpowered anybody that Suffolk County can throw at him from the guard position. Now Kelly at 6'1", 5.7 rebounds a game. Tynes misses a layup going in. So Wanted good. the foul, didn't get it. Really good pass from Bookhart. Buckley, 10 points tonight. Hasn't scored in the second half. He's double teamed, trapped, gets the ball out of his hands to Burgraff. Burgraff in the right corner, Ray. Ray to Johnson. Burgraff, now Buckley. Guarded by Bookhart. Buckley retreats out, double crossover, splits two defenders, and he trapped. One step, two extra for Buckley. But it was a smooth split of the defenders, just unable to finish the play. It really just held the ball a little bit too long, allowed the defense to anticipate what was coming and made him take an extra step to get through that double team. There would have been help there anyway. Probably should have kept the ball moving. But Buckley, such a good player, thought it has the confidence. Tides has it nearly poked away. Somehow finds Graziano left wing. He missed the three. Rebound brought down A.J. Ray. And an unnecessary foul from Steven Tunes. Second team foul of the half. Second foul of the game for Tynes. So he's not in any sort of trouble. Just over six minutes into half number two. Central Lakes two-point lead. Only two fouls called here in this second half. It's been a physical game. But the officials allowing the players to play. Buckley, pump fake, works the screen, Johnson, drives in, up and under, and good. Four-point lead, Central Lakes. Buckley with 12. And Chris Buckley, the sophomore from Coon Rapids, trying to carry his team like he has all year to the biggest upset all year. 46-42, Central Lakes in the lead. We'll step aside. This is the national championships on NJCAA-TV. Suffolk County trailing by four as the one seed. Fans, make sure that you visit. NJCABasketball.org. Keep up with the latest news and updates regarding NJCAA basketball by visiting the official website at www.njcaa.org. Suffolk County down by four. Agostino bringing it up on Buckley. Tyree Grimsley right wing. Signer looking for a back cut on Tynes and a clear jersey pull by Malik Kelly. And you could see From that here. jersey came all the way untucked. And that's why you tucked that jersey so you can see the jersey pull. Yeah. Had they not called that, that would have been pretty egregious. Yes, it would have. 
They did, though. So full credit to the officials. It's been a well-officiated game. It's been a well-officiated tournament thus far. It really has. There's been some tough games to officiate. Good defense from Kelly. Knocked it out of the hands of Tynes. But the Sharks keep possession of the basketball. 16 on the shot clock. Especially that Rock Valley game against Bunker Hill. That was a tough game to officiate. Very physical. I thought they did a nice job. They had to call a lot of fouls, but because there were a lot of fouls. Tynes falling. Somehow finds Agostino. Three missed. Rebound offensive. Signer inside. Signer can't make it. And Kelly collects the board. Central Lakes fans, they're loving it. Their team up by four. Chris Buckley with a basketball. Buckley on to Burgraff. Now Kelly. Kelly inside. He's fouled on his way to the bucket. It was on the floor and an inbound upcoming for Central Lakes. I think Tynes is going to have to try to take over here down the stretch. Suffolk County, there's just no individual matchups they can really exploit except that one. And Tynes is going to have a really good defender on him all the time, but he's so good that it might be all right. Buckley's better. Three point from the corner. And Central Lakes is their biggest lead of the game at seven. Chris Buckley with 15. Passes Stephen Tynes to lead all scores. Agostino guarded by Buckley. Graziano right wing. Tynes working off and off ball screen. Gets the basketball guarded by Malik Kelly. Tynes with 14 tonight. Gets a screen signal. Works the free throw line. Steps back. Long two. Missed it. Offensive rebound though for Grimsley. Up and in. And it's 49-44. Grimsley showing some elevation. Continuing to hustle. Grimsley, eight points tonight. Kelly losing the basketball, and he'll foul Graziano, who poked it away from him. And Suffolk County gets the ball back down five. And as soon as Central Lakes looks like they're going to start gain gaining control of this game, the Sharks, they're working their way right back into this one. It's been back and forth and back and forth. These two teams very evenly matched. That was a really nice play by Graziano. Saw that, was it? I don't remember who had it. It was either Buckley or Kelly. Was just getting too fancy and not paying attention to anything else. Snuck in behind and just poked that ball away. Led to a foul and a turnover. Tynes working on Arnold. Long two. Missed it. Rebound, Chris Buckley. Steven Tynes, little off. 6 of 15 today. They ran a low, four low set designed for Tynes to be able to get to the hoop there. Settled for a jumper. You wonder if he's tired. Buckley high off the glass. Missed it. It's out of bounds. Ty Johnson can't grab the rebound. And it's Suffolk County basketball. Right now, Suffolk County shooting 37.5%. Central Lakes up to 42.5% from the field in this game. And a very strong 37.5% from three. Well, Suffolk County's only gotten three of 12 to go from three-point land. We'll go ahead and keep it here as a timeout on the floor. And remind you to order your official 2019 NJCAA Men's Basketball National Championship merchandise online at the NJCAA store. Visit shop.njcaa.org to view exclusive National Championship and NJCAA merchandise. For your first order, you can receive 10% off. It's a pretty good deal. Using the promo code WELCOME10 and all orders over $75 receive free shipping. Visit shop.njcaa.org and order your official championship gear today. 49-44, the Sharks and Victor Correa, the one seed, high expectations. Victor Correa says if they buy in and focus in these three games in Rochester, they will fall in the category of the other two great Suffolk basketball teams. But right now, with 11 and a half to go in this half, they're down by five to the eight seed Central Lakes. A Central Lakes team that all season long in every single poll did not receive a single vote to be considered one of the top 10 teams in the country. And I think they're proving a lot of those voters wrong with their performance here in the opening round in Rochester. Well, they've won 15 consecutive games. It's a pretty good league. There's a lot of good basketball here in Minnesota. It's an underrated area for sure. Tynes works off a screen, Grimsley goes inside the lane, handoff, and a score for Stevenson from the left block. Nice assist from Steven Tynes. 
Buckley will have the basketball crossing the timeline. Guarded by Agostino. Three-point lead for the Raiders. Arnold, all nine points coming in the first half. A.J. Ray to Birdraft. Now left wing, Chris Buckley. Buckley through the legs. Fade away. Missed it off the right side. Iron offensive rebound. Ty Johnson and scores. Five-point lead, Raiders. Kynes just going to slowly set this up. Now explodes to the hoop. Pushes off Arnold a bit, no call, and a 15-foot jumper, silky smooth, from Steven Tynes. Cuts the lead back to three. The old MJ push-off. They hardly ever call it. It's tough to see. Stolen away. Tyree Grimsley, Euro step, soft floater, and it fell off. Rebound, Chris Buckley. Here come the Raiders. Buckley. Pass into the corner, Arnold, A.J. Ray, right wing, and he traveled. And another turnover for Central Lakes. Their turnover total today has been way too high. That's 13 now on the night. They've cut it way down in the second half, though. They had 10 in that first half, just three here in the second. They've taken better care of the ball. Well, Suffolk County the opposite. In that first half, they only had five turnovers. They're up to nine. Central Lakes has been putting a lot of pressure on the ball on just about everybody but Tynes. Tynes can beat them one-on-one -on -one off the dribble and get to the hoop and set up players and score. Tynes pushed from behind as he went to the bucket. Foul is on the floor. Neither team close to the bonus. And Grimsley and Tynes having a probably not a friendly conversation with Josh Arnold, the freshman, underneath the basket. In Suffolk County... They can't let them down by three to the eight seed lead to frustration because I don't think that's going to be the way you get out of this hole. No, I mean, it's a three-point game. It's one shot here to tie it up. They've hung in there the whole time, and they know how to close games. They've won every game they've played this season, so they know how to do the little things to win. It's just a matter of coming through here down the stretch. Graziano, three right wing, no good. Stevenson fighting for a rebound. And I believe he's called for a push off, he is. Noah Stevenson with a foul. Over halfway through this second half. And the unranked eight seed Central Lakes with five losses this year have a lead against the number one ranked undefeated Suffolk County. Buckley to Harris. Open mid-range jumper, missed it. Tried to get his own rebound, does not, and it's out of bounds. Oh, Harris had a lane touch. to the hoop. He needed to attack the basket, not settle for that 15-footer. He was open, but he could have got to the rack, could have got fouled. So many good things happen when a player like that can get to the hoop. An elbow to the face of Arnold right in front of the official and no call. I didn't see it, but the Central Lakes fans, they're yeah. green with you. I don't think it was intentional. Grimsley going up, missed it short. Ty Johnson with a rebound. Both coaches thought there should have been a foul. Starting to get a little chippy. Buckley goes by three defenders and has a shot blocked. Knocked out of the hands of Graziano to Sharks basketball. Central Lakes are leaving some opportunities on the table. A good look from 15 foot. Buckley had a decent look at the rim. Against the number one team. They may feel like they're equal to them in many ways, but you don't want to have this come down to the last minute against a team that executes the way that this Suffolk County team does. Suffolk County has been perfect all year. 27 wins, no losses. It's been an imperfect start to this tournament run where they expected to be national champions. Steven Tynes with 16 tonight, seven of 16. He drives by Arnold. And a foul is called on his way to the basket. Josh Arnold called for the foul. Third foul tonight for Arnold. Tynes has such a quick crossover. It is just impossible to stay in front of him. And look at the bench get into it, trying to create the energy for their team, who is drastically outnumbered in fan support here in Rochester. It's a pretty loud gym at the moment. Inbound high, caught by Graziano. 
Graziano to Tynes. Tynes double team, gets, gets rid of it. Graziano can't get around Harris. Buckley with the steal, goes the other way and scores. Chris Tynes. Buckley now is 15 tonight. Tynes hustled back to try and contest it, but just couldn't get there. Buckley was too fast. Can you make that 17 for Buckley? He leads all scores. Him and Tynes have been going head to head. Right now, Josh Arnold guarding Tynes. Tynes to an open Grimsley. He's fouled at the bucket. What a find from Steven Tynes. A jump pass inside to an open Grimsley. And he's earned two free throws. Yeah, that was a beautiful pass. And just look at Tynes directing everybody on what to do, telling them on this next possession where to be and where to go. Great leader on the floor. That's the reason he's got 9.9 .9 assists per game. He's a returning All-American. First free throw for Grimsley is good. Grimsley had one trip at the line earlier, went 0 of 2. Now 1 of 3. He's got nine points tonight. Try to be the second shark to enter double digits. And if he makes it, it'll just be a one possession lead for the Raiders. And he does. Grimsley with 10. Here comes full court pressure. They try to trap a lob away. That was a dangerous pass. They get it up to Buckley. Buckley to Harris, right block. Missed it, but an offensive rebound and put back score. Jock Hayes. Hayes just active in the lane, not giving up. And after you break the press, a lot of times if you miss the layup because you have numbers, it's easier to get that offensive rebound. And Hayes saw it right there. Pitagio. Pass continued on to Grimsley, and Grimsley scores. 12 points tonight for him. Lead back down to three. In the right corner, Harris. Harris to Buckley. Open three. Yes, sir! Chris Buckley with an even 20 points. Steven Tynes is fouled by Josh Arnold. And that's the fourth foul for Arnold. That's a tough call. Arnold really looked like he got a lot of ball initially. Maybe fouled him on the loose ball, chasing after it. Arnold having a conversation with the official. Timeout taken on the floor. Seven and a half minutes left. Central Lakes, a six-point lead as the eighth seed. Upset time? Find out next. NJCAA TV. Let the game to buy merchandise? No problem. Visit shop.njcaa.org and order your official NJCAA and National Championship merchandise online. On your first order, use promo code WELCOME10 to receive 10% off. View all of the official 2018 championship merchandise and official NJCAA Adidas gear available. You can also receive free shipping anywhere in the United States on all orders over $75. Visit shop.njcaa.org to order your official gear today. Are you tired of watching your favorite NJCAA broadcasts on your small mobile device? You can now watch them on your TV with new apps for Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the NJCAA and Blue Frame Technology. Final quarterfinal matchup of the day. 27-0, one seeded Suffolk County Sharks down by six to the 25-5 Central Lakes Raiders. Steven Tynes, 18 points tonight. We'll have the basketball to start. Driving on Arnold, spinning in the lane. Fire in the left corner, Bookhart three. Yes, it's good. Been waiting for Bookhart to score. He averages 10 a game, that's his first bucket. Quickly up the other way, Harris, Ty Johnson. Works through the contact and scores. Stevenson blocked that, but Johnson just is strong enough that he finished through it, hung in the air, and was able to bank it in anyway. Bookhart just gave the ball up to Tynes, but Bookhart hit that three, his first points of the game. He had a 41-point game back on January 24th. Interesting that he's only taken a couple shots today. Tynes tries to hand off to Stevenson, but it's off of Johnson and the Sharks. 
They're just possession. isolating Tynes up high, running four low, creating space, letting him drive. And I think that hit Stevenson in the hands, and he just didn't catch it. Fortunate that they retained possession. Tynes into the corner. Bookhart, skip pass, Pictagio. To Bookhart, corner three. He's feeling it. Suffolk County only down two. Buckley with 20 tonight. Through two defenders. Great pass. And Ty Johnson with an easy lay-in. That was pretty, Chris Buckley. Picture-perfect pass break. Drive in, draw the defender, and make the easy dump-off pass. And an easy shot for the big fella. Just over six to play. Tynes off a screen from Stevenson. Gives it to Stevenson on the roll, and he scores. Good pick-and-roll action. And the lead back to two. How about Buckley? Inside, blocked by Stevenson. Johnson with a rebound and scores. Ty Johnson coming up big again. And Central Lakes continues to push, continues to claw. They got a four-point lead. Sometimes it's the breaks of the game. Tyne stepped back good. Two block shots defensively for Stevenson. They both ended up in points for the other team just because of Unlucky bounces. Whistle just to calm everybody down, and now the inbound. Arnold will bring it up for Central Lakes. Arnold with nine points all in the first half. Finds Buckley. Buckley guarded by Bookhart. Buckley inside. Jock Hayes takes contact, and Stevenson with a foul will send Hayes to the line. And Stevenson held that ball above his head. He has really long arms for his size. And he's a big dude, but I think his wingspan exceeds his height. He has arms like draped down to his knees when he holds them to his side. Noah Stevenson. But he's got four fouls in this one. And Jock Hayes, a 69% free throw shooter, misses the first to two. Signer comes in for Picataggio. He's going to bring in some size as Central Lakes has really been hammering on the offensive glass the last couple possessions. Especially Ty Johnson, who now has got 14 points and 11 rebounds. Second is good for Jock Hayes. He's got five tonight. One for four at the line. And a timeout on the floor. We'll stay here. Three-point lead, Central Lakes. And it's a great time to remind you that Spalding is proud to be the official basketball of the National Junior College Athletic Association. Spalding's TF-1000 Legacy Balls used exclusively at all NJCAA basketball championships and the NJCAA thanks Spalding for the continued support. Spalding, true to the game. Three-point lead Central Lakes, and I think we're in for a great finish here. Possibly our best finish of the day, but it'll be hard to top that overtime one that felt like it was an entire lifetime ago <laughs> for you and I, Logan, but it's been a lot of fun. Day one of the Division Three National Championships. We've seen a lot of really good basketball players here through now four games of the NJCAA Division Three tournament. And, but that was an incredible finish in the opener between Middlesex County and Richland. Both teams seem to have it clinched a couple different times and just crazy plays. We'll see if they can repeat history here. We'll see what the final five has in store for us. Tines to Bookhart, third three, no. And a rebound for Jack Hayes. Arnold yet to score in this second half. To Hayes, back to Arnold. And now Kelvin Harris. Buckley with an even 20. Ty Johnson, toss inside, knocked out of bounds by Grimsley, 11 on the shot clock. An inbound coming up for the Raiders. Johnson just needed a smidge more air under there and it would have been an easy layup, a good idea. But Grimsley, his defense made it require perfect execution, which they didn't get. Johnson catches off the inbound into the corner. Harris to Buckley. Buckley, three at the end of the shot clock, he got it. Chris Buckley. 
Six point lead, Central Lakes. Tines up quickly. That could be a play of the game type of shot at this point. Really seems to have swung the momentum. The end of the shot clock, three from Buckley, gives him 23 tonight. Tines cross court to Bookhart. Bookhart has it tipped away. Buckley with the steal. Running out, chased down by Signer. Block off the backboard. Signer says no. In Suffolk County, works the other way. Tines from the corner to Bookhart. Open three. No good. Missed it short. Gets his own rebound. Works baseline. Bookhart. Get that out of here. Jock Hayes with the block. You know, it's impressive to do that. But if you're able to block that shot that easily, try to just tip it to yourself and keep possession. It's hard to do. Here's that three by Buckley at the end of the shot clock. Boy, that's pretty. And then a couple sweet blocks on the next possessions. We've got a good one, a good finish coming your way. Final four here from Rochester. This is NJCAA TV. Six-point lead for Central Lakes. They've shot 44% from three compared to just 29% for Suffolk County. Big reason why they have the lead. Suffolk County will start with the ball out of the timeout. Central Lakes playing zone. Tynes gets a screen from Grimsley. Into the corner, Graziano to Tynes. Three made, Stephen Tynes. I don't really understand why they switched to the zone. They were defensively handling their business. They've given up a couple open looks. Ty Johnson tries to find a pass inside. It's tipped. Harris recovers, and Harris throws it away. Grimsley with the steal. Tynes, who joins Buckley as only players over 20 points, driving in, pass into the corner. Agostino, three, in and out. Rebound Malik Kelly. That would have tied the game. They're either doing a box and one or having Agostino just fully deny Buckley with no help. And Tynes commits a foul, reaching in on Kelly near midcourt. They're trying to take Buckley out of this game with Agostino. That's four fouls for Steven Tynes. Something to watch. It should open up the lane for pretty much everybody else. See if Malik Kelly is able to take advantage of this, or maybe they try to post up Buckley. But Agostino just completely face guarding him as much as possible. Kelly working on Tynes. Out to Harris, gets a screen, Johnson. Inside Kelly, spinning on Tynes and scoring. Tynes not wanting to get that fifth foul, backed up on him a bit. It's a five point lead for Central Lakes. The upset now is not looking unlikely, it looks more likely than not. It's a two possession game. This is a big possession though. You don't Tynes. want this ball in the hands of anyone but Tynes. Deep three, no good, rebound Grimsley. Back up for the Sharks, he missed it. Signer can't get it to go. Rebound Johnson. Look up. They fire cross court. Ty Johnson has it knocked out of his hands by Signer. Great defensive recovery by him. And it will be Central Lakes basketball. A five point lead, just over two minutes to play. Here in Rochester, Minnesota. The final game of four. The final spot in the semifinals on the line. Suffolk County looking for their first national championship since 2004. 
They're the number one ranked team in the country. Central Lakes looking for their first championship ever. And it's and one is good. How about that? Jock Hayes with some emphasis. And it's a seven point lead. And that is the shot you're going to remember if you're a Central Lakes fan as the shot that at least made it feel comfortable down the stretch. And if you're a Suffolk County fan, that may feel like a dagger to the heart. And the That's free throw is good as well. How about this from Jock Hayes? Catches lob. high, spins around Graziano. Woo, that's pretty. Just over two to play. Suffolk County not out of it yet. We've seen crazier things in this tournament today. Agostino crosses midcourt. Signer, hand off to Tynes. Tynes goes in the lane, takes body contact, can't get it to fall, but is fouled. And Steven Tynes calling his teammates together. Discuss the plans. Lee Kelly trying to sell a little bit of a push off as he tried to get in the huddle there for Suffolk County. Officials did a good job of not overreacting there. Ty Johnson, Jock Hayes both putting the, hey, calm down, calm down. We got an eight point lead. Two ticks under two. Steven Tynes, 21 tonight. He's one of two from the line, nine of 19 from the field. Very little margin for error for the Sharks at this point. They need these free throws. I think Tynes is tired. He's left his last couple shots short for that free throw short. He's played this entire game. He's been hounded constantly full court. They ask him to carry a lot of the load. Yeah, Tynes this year, 20.5 points per game, 9.9 .9 assists. Second shot is good. Suffolk County trailing by seven. Three possession game. Josh Arnold guarded by Tynes who has four fouls. Patient here from Central Lakes. Lee Kelly inside, goes up, missed it. Signer with a rebound. Tynes will cross the timeline. Tynes by Johnson. Tried to hand off Stevenson, had it knocked out of his hand. Fires in the corner, Bookhart, three, no good. Rebound brought down by Buckley. And Buckley is fouled. And Central Lakes, if they can just execute at the free throw line, they will have pulled the biggest upset of this entire season for Division Three. If you looked at the metrics, if you looked at the numbers, and you looked at the rankings and you trusted them, this was by far is going to be the biggest upset of the year, especially because it happens in the first round here at Rochester. It is, and from the beginning of this game, Central Lakes has not looked intimidated by the number one team Honestly, for why don't one we just second. Say they look better. They look like the better team. They have today, that is for certain. They have looked... They've controlled most of the game. They haven't shot out of their mind. They've just seemed like the better team. Buckley. And today they have been the better team. Buckley, an eight-point lead, has the first free throw good. Chris Buckley with 24 tonight. Not even close to his season high of 32 back on January 16th. But he's been hot. And he makes the second. Little help from the rim. But Chris Buckley with 25 tonight. After 31 points to carry his team from the district final to this spot. They earned the eight seed. And now they've got a nine point lead on the one seed. Grimsley, it's a goaltend. Grimsley's bucket counts. And the lead Suffolk, down to seven. Suffolk County not going to quit. Still a minute 17. Cattagio likely in as a person that they want to commit the foul. Ty Johnson. That's not what they wanted. Fires to Kelly, who's wide open. Touchdown. And an even bigger lead, up to nine for Central Lakes, their biggest of the game. Tynes has it now. Minute three left. 
Any magic from Tynes, teammate not looking, stolen away. Under a minute to play, wide open. He'll toss it up to Johnson for an oop. Emphasis, and the upset seems certain. Central Lakes, the unranked eight seed. Looks like they're headed to the semis. Agostino tosses one up. Ty Johnson brings it down. He tosses up to Jock Hayes. Hayes has it ripped out of his hands, but it will be Central Lakes basketball as Tynes walked out of bounds, and Tynes looks like he surrendered. 41 and six ticks, 79-68. The Raiders from Brainerd, Minnesota. They are 41 seconds away from the biggest upset of the Division III season. Timeout on the floor. We'll go ahead and step aside for 30. Suffolk County needs a true miracle. Central Lakes, 41.6 away from the biggest upset of the year. This is the National Championships on NJCAA TV. Jim Russell has been coaching Central Lakes for 21 seasons. This is his third time in the national tournament, and this will probably be the win he remembers the most. Central Lakes an 11-point lead as the eighth seed with 41.6 left. It's just about not messing up here at the end. Ty Johnson will back out to the corner. Is there a foul coming from Suffolk County? They're trying for the basketball. Kelly going by Graziano in the lane. He's fouled hard by James Signer. Good job yeah. keeping his cool by Kelly. That was yeah, that was a hard foul. You could get upset about that. But that was Kelly, an unnecessarily hard foul. That was a clothesline across the face. That was a, oh my gosh, 27 wins in a row, zero losses, the undisputed number one team in the country, and he realizes that he's going to lose. Victor Correa sending James Signer over to talk to the officials. Officials are deciding whether to be a flagrant. Signer goes over and gives a handshake to Malik Kelly after the hard foul. We're waiting for the official call here, but 29.7 left. Central Lakes with 11 point lead. Such an exciting game back and forth and it looks like an anticlimactic finish. Yeah, they call the technical foul or a flagrant foul, however you wanna, it's a flagrant foul is the right term. It'll be free throws for Kelly, a chance to pad his stats a little bit. Missed the first of two. Kelly's had a great game tonight, 12 points, six boards. Played solid defense, five of seven from the field. How he's about? Just, he's a unique talent, he's so strong at that guard position, he's been able to post up any of the guards from Suffolk County, and anytime on the block, he just out muscles them. And his rebounding has really been good all season long, averaging just under six boards a game, and he's got six tonight. 12 point lead. Central Lakes, all the Central Lakes fans who made the 213 mile trip from Brainerd, Minnesota, standing on their feet. Pass inside, Jock Hayes scores. And now, it's a borderline blowout here at the end. Double figure lead. 14 point advantage, biggest of the game for Central Lakes. Tynes pulls a three, missed it in and out. In Suffolk County understands their reality, and their reality is their tournament comes to an end. And Central Lakes' reality is the semifinals. The Raiders from Brainerd pull the biggest upset of the season, and they'll be playing Rock Valley for an opportunity to play for a national championship. Final score, 82-68. Logan and I will break down the biggest upset of the season. 
When we return, this is NJCAA TV. Upsets, yes, they happen. That's what March is all about. A little bit of madness happened here in Rochester. 82-68, Central Lakes, the eight seed, unranked, knocks off the undefeated, undisputed number one team in the country, Suffolk County, by a final score of 82-68. Chris Buckley, the man, the myth, the legend, 25 points, and our relations insurance play of the game is this three as the shot clock expired. Let's go ahead and take a look at a relations insurance play of the game. And Logan, this is just what makes Chris Buckley so special. Yeah, when you have a player who, when that shot clock is winding down, can just make something happen, and Buckley did that several times. This seems like the one where you really felt that like it, was it wasn't going back and forth anymore and that Central Lakes was in control of the game. And, and this was the shot you're like, this is going to happen. 
Central Lakes is going to pull this upset. And Chris Buckley, he's the guy that carried him there. 25 points, six rebounds, three assists, eight of 21 from the field, four of 10 from three. And he's been incredible in the district final and now 31 points in the district final to get them here, 25 points to have them upset the one seed. One more look at it. Buckley, boom. And Central Lakes is headed to the semifinals to play Rock Valley. And now the question is, can Central Lakes win another one? Can they pull another upset? And, Logan, you and I agreed. I think that tomorrow will be very interesting. Both semifinals should be a lot of fun tomorrow. Yeah, I really think Rock Valley and Central Lakes are really similar teams. They're both long. They're both athletic. They both make some mental errors from time to time and don't always play in the most disciplined of fashion, but they make things happen, and they like to get up and down. It should be a really fun matchup. Yeah, a little bit of Minnesota magic here for Central Lakes, the only team that's competing in their home state in this tournament with a tournament here in Rochester, Minnesota. You know, I'm not from this great state. Is, is there such a thing as Minnesota magic? Haven't you seen the Mighty Ducks? I have seen the Mighty Ducks, so you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Central Lakes with a huge upset. Any final thoughts uh, for this one, Logan? You know, we talked about this during the game. We talked about it off the air from tip to finish. This didn't really feel like an upset once you saw the teams out there. Central Lakes was clearly an underrated team. They're playing as good a basketball at this time of year as anybody in the tournament, and they just showed that sometimes it's about being hot at the right time, and you know, they did everything they needed to do, and they come up with an enormous upset. 48% from the field for Central Lakes, 8 of 19 from 3. They outshot Suffolk County at the end, but they did turn it over more, and they ended up out-rebounding Suffolk County. The one seed, they're out. No more undefeated teams left. It's Rock Valley against Central Lakes tomorrow, and then it's also the consolation bracket. And on the other side, Herkimer against Richland. Both matchups super excited for, and I think all four teams left in the tournament have a, essentially an equal shot, I think. Herkimer might be the favorite as the two seed. They've won 25 straight, but I think all four teams, if they're national champions at the end of this weekend, Logan, we will not be surprised. Herkimer definitely looked the best today, and, you know, that could be... One strong showing against someone else's underwhelming showing that they were able to pull out a win. You never know how that's going to change on a day-to-day -day basis, especially with young kids. You have to remember, all freshmen and sophomores here at the junior college level, and anything can happen in that type of situation. So Herkimer looked really good. I would put them as the favorite, but again, would not be surprised if any of the four remaining teams were ended up in that championship matchup. That is for tomorrow, though. Tonight, Central Lakes can celebrate a little bit of Minnesota magic, an upset against the number one team in the country. For our camera operators, Dave Belmont and Tom Ritchie, and our director, Kaiser Decam and Logan Anderson sitting next to me, I'm Lucas Moore. Have a fantastic night, and we'll see you tomorrow for the semifinals. This has been the National Championships on NJCA-TV.